who are here, those who are watching online, we'd like to welcome you to the Richland Center Seventh-day Adventist Church. What a beautiful Sabbath. Our call to worship today is found in John 13, 34, and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. At this time, the praise team will come forward. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everybody. The Lord is amazing. What an awesome, awesome uh, God and, and creator and savior. And uh, let us just sing praises to him this morning. Our first song, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. We'll sing this through twice and let it just sink in.
Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. Our dear, kind Heavenly Father, we do grant it a privilege that we're able to gather on this your holy Sabbath day. We thank you for the privilege of being able to come aside and worship you, come aside and draw close to you, and that your Holy Spirit may speak to our minds and our hearts. <coughs> Be with this day, us this day, especially during this wonderful season that we celebrate the birth of your Son, who is willing to come to this earth <coughs> to live and to die on a cruel cross so that we may have eternal life. Be with us now, we ask, in thy precious name. Amen. Amen. Please open your hymnals to hymn 125, and please stand for the opening song, Joy to the World. Joy to the World, 125.
At this time, for those who can, please kneel as far as possible. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for all that you have done for us. We think of those that aren't here that are not well today. Lord, we ask that you watch over them. <coughs> Give them strength, Lord, and help them through. Father, we thank you for Linda and the message that she's bringing to us today. Father, we ask that you continue to bless this church. Be with the Creation Health Seminar tonight. And Father, I thank you for watching over my cousins. Lord, I, it's been a rough time with them losing their mom and stuff, but Father, I just pray that they will come to you. We ask these things in your dear name. Amen. Our scripture text this morning is found in Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. At this time, Dale will have a special music for us, The Birthday of a King.
And all the people said, Amen. At this time, our dear sister Linda will bring us her message. Thank you. Good morning. When I came in this morning, I thought you'd anticipated my coming by having a podium here so that I don't have to climb the stairs. And when Marcia said that she felt like she was falling apart, join the club. You've heard the saying, there must be a God. That saying bothers me. Because when I hear it, I think they don't know there is a God. When I came in this morning and we had song service, and Carl chose one of the songs that I had asked for. And then when he got to a scripture reading, he chose the text I had asked for. God knew there is a God. It just joined in so beautifully. When I called Dale earlier this week and I said, I want you to have special music for me. And I gave him a choice, you know. I couldn't demand, you know. I had to let him make his own decision. And I'm so pleased with what you chose, Dale, because I've never heard that arrangement and it was so beautifully done and you did it so well. And I thank you for praising our Lord and Savior at the birthday of a king. My message today is a message of the season. In less than two weeks, we will celebrate the birth of Jesus, the best gift ever. We've heard that Jesus is the reason for the season and how important his birth was then and how important it is today. But for the worldly, it's a season of Santa sights, sounds, and smells. It's the time when the streets are transformed with decorations, colors, and lights. And yes, some people are even transformed. Some attitudes seem to change for the better, while with others it still can be bah humbug. It can be a time of high spirits, a time of family togetherness, a time of gift buying, uh, sometimes too much, and gift giving. Everything gets well planned, whether it be a Christmas party, visits, baking, food. Everyone gets involved one way or the other. They either become totally immersed or totally alienated. Everyone gets excited. But we as Christians remember the miracle of his birth. We remember that Jesus is indeed the reason for the season. We remember that Jesus came to this earth to show us what his Father in heaven is really like. We remember the announcement by the angel Gabriel to Mary that Jesus the Messiah would be born to her, a virgin in a town called Bethlehem. Have you ever thought about the many gifts that Christ's life parallels in our lives? Each aspect of his life is a gift to us. Let's begin with that birth. What woman can forget the excitement of the birth of a child? The nine months of carrying the baby with the morning sickness, the food cravings, the expanding middle, the tight clothing that yields to maternity clothes or just the baggy look, and then it happens. The first pains, not regular at first, but contractions coming closer and closer together until they seem like one constant pain, then maybe even the breaking of the water. There's the mad dash to the hospital in an ambulance, a car or a truck, through traffic and uncooperative lights, and sometimes through storms of rain or snow with or without the legendary suitcase, and still those intense contractions. Then the arrival at the hospital with its lights and sounds and faces and controlled chaos filled with voices and orders. And then the final pain of the child's arrival. Birth is painful, but what a joy when that child is finally placed in your arms. You hear its first lusty cries. 
You hold it in your arms. You count its fingers and its toes. And to be part of it all as mother, father, grandparent, family, friend, or even coach. To be part of the wonderful gift of life given to us by Jesus is truly a blessing. And all breathe a sigh of relief when that finally arrives. I had the privilege of being the coach for all seven of my grandchildren. One surely by accident because her coach didn't show up. And I had gone through the birth of my third grandchild three months before. So I had the privilege of being there for all seven of them. Now comes the excitement. Let's spread the news. Today, it's spread by Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, cell phone, texting, email, or word of mouth. The baby's born, it's here, it's a boy, it's a girl, or maybe it's twins or triplets. Soon the gifts, festive balloons, or yard signs tell the story in pink or blue. They're all wishes, well wishes and gifts of joy and happiness. But what about back then? when Mary had Jesus in a stable in Bethlehem. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, please. Luke chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Jesus also went up from Gal Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Was she having labor pains as she and Joseph worked their way through the crowded streets of Bethlehem, looking for a place to stay? Any place to stay as her time drew near. Was she having contractions as Joseph spoke to the innkeeper? Had her contractions been so severe that her water broke as she rode that donkey? No hospital here, no doctor or nurse, or even a midwife. Just her, Joseph, and the animals in the stable. No bright lights, no strange voices, no anxious orders, no organized chaos. Just her and her husband. But finally, the joy of the birth of her son, Jesus, as foretold by the angel Gabriel. We read those words in Luke chapter 1, verses 30 and 31. Luke chapter 1, verses 30 and 31. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. The gift of eternal life for everyone was wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger in a stable in a little town called Bethlehem. Now comes the excitement of spreading the news, not by Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, cell phones, email, texting, or even one blue balloon. The news was spread by an angel choir and a star. Luke 2, 8 through 14 tells us of this. What might it have been like for a shepherd boy on that night? What might it have been like to hear the angel choir and see the sky lighted up with their glory and their joy? Then there was the star that was seen by the, by the wise men in Matthew 2, verses 1 and 2. This baby boy became the gift of joy and happiness for all the world, not just the shepherd and the wise men, but for you and for me and for the whole world. That was his birth. But 
what about the gift of his young life? Learning about his heavenly father's business at the feet of his mother and father. Just as we too enjoy the gift of learning about Jesus at the feet of our parents. Then there's the gift of baptism. Look at the gift of this example for us as he came up out of the Jordan River. Matthew 30 verse 17 says, He heard his heavenly father say, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Is this how the Lord feels about us coming into his family by baptism? Does he say of us as it was in writ written in Psalms 2-7, This day I have begotten thee? Does he announce our new birth with heavenly balloons of pink or blue? Are there stars that shine a little brighter because we have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior? Does he dispatch angels to other worlds, angelic messengers, sharing the best news in the world? This, my child, is born again. What follows is the gift of his mature life. As he left his humble home to begin his work of his earthly mission. Remember the blessing he was to all who came in contact with him. He gave them hope. He healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He made the lame to walk and the dumb to speak. He gave food. He gave water. He gave life. In Ministry of Healing, page 143 is a text I love. It says he mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them. He ministered to their needs. He won their confidence. And then he said, bade them follow me. He was the way, the truth, and the life while he walked on this earth. Our gift in our mature Christian life should be no less. As we call to worship, as our call to worship said, this is the way that we show love to one another. We too can give hope, help, and comfort as he did. We can mingle with all. We can show our sympathy. We can meet their needs. We can win their confidence. And then we can point them to Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. How important life is. In this season, so important to think about the best gift ever the gift of Jesus Christ. He gave his own life in order that we may have life. Any number of things can happen tomorrow, but nothing can rob you of the assurance that you have today in Jesus. Years ago, in a book written by Emily Barnes, she explained how important it is to receive Jesus as a gift every single day. Every moment of your life is precious and important to be received with gratitude and unwrapped with joy and then shared like a box of chocolates. There's an interesting thing about this gift. With the gift of life, the more you give away, the more you receive, heaped up, overflowing with a big red bow on top. And then there's the gift of his death for you. For me, for all. John 3, 16. This means that every one of us who chooses to receive that gift every day of our lives is going to be like Christmas. Turn to Isaiah 53, verses 4 through 6. Isaiah 53. Verses 4 through 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him smitten, stricken of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him 
the iniquity of us all. And because of this, in our scripture text today, found in Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7, we have the words, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the hosts of the Lord will perform this. God allowed his son to come to this earth as a helpless infant, to meet life's dangers and temptations just like every other human. He allowed his son to fight the battles that every person must fight. And the risk of failing and losing his eternal life, both for himself and for us. Imagine the magnitude of that. So remember that our lives have been full of the wonderful blessings from our Father in heaven. Wonderful gifts from the hand of his son, Jesus Christ. And the title of the message today was A Gift That Keeps On Giving. But in reality, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Every day we should be thankful for Jesus and for the opportunity to live Christmas as a daily experience. And as it said in our scripture text, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, how, that how you have love one for another. The greatest gift was given to us when God allowed his son to be born, a babel, babe in a stable in Bethlehem. What a gift of love he was willing to give to us. And as we showed that love to those around us, we show his coming is soon. Never forget the gift of love, the gift that keeps on giving, the gift of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, born in a manger, hung on a cross to die for each and every one of us, the gift that keeps on giving. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our dear kind Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this gift. Without this gift, we would have no hope. Without this gift, we would have no eternal life. We thank you for living the life that you did and for living it perfectly for each and every one of us and being willing to die on a cross so that we might have eternal life. Be with each and every one of us as we let your light shine through us to those around us. May it be each and every day, not just now at Christmas, but so that when people look at us, they can say, this individual, that individual has been with Jesus. Jesus lives in their heart. Be with us as we remember this special day when you were born, and as we also remember this, your holy Sabbath day. Be with us as we go forth to be your light and your witness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is page number 142. When you get to be the speaker, you get to pick your favorite Christmas song, hymn, and this one happens to be mine. Page 142, Angels We Have Heard on High. all stand and join with the angels in heaven in chorus.
Thank you for the gift of the birth of your son. Thank you for the gift of his life. Thank you for the gift of the cross. And we thank you in advance for his soon coming. Be with each and every one of us as we celebrate his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, and that soon coming. Be with each and every one of us that joy that comes at this time of year for so many. Thank you. 